suffering with acid reflux, the surprising bacterial cause. Unfortunately, the classic way to treat heartburn is exactly the wrong thing to do for this type of condition. What we're going to be discussing today is literally a new type of acid reflux and what's causing it, what you can do about it. What's exciting about it is pretty easy to treat naturally, uh, but we're going to go through all the steps. So what the study looked at was individuals that had the classic heartburn symptoms, but um, they didn't have upon testing, now, and not everybody goes and does an endoscopy, but when they did that, the esophagus was not severely irritated, the stomach was not severely irritated, and so then you kind of throw up your hands and say, why, you know, why do you have these symptoms? So uh, the symptoms are really there, and what they found in these individuals were uh, bacteria. They are called gram-negative bacteria, uh, but the point is that these bacteria, when they're over abundant. So they are a normal part of our flora and fauna, uh, our microbiome, you know, there's, there's trillions, right? Tens of trillions of bacteria. So they're, they're normally there as a constituent. They just should not overgrow. So in these individuals with these symptoms of heartburn, uh, they were too abundant. And what that does, it causes a cascade of inflammatory chemicals to be released, and that creates actually a leaky esophagus. So um, we talk about leaky gut all the time, which has to do with sort of the, the barrier integrity of, of the colon, of the gut, and it's supposed to be very protective to keep, to keep bad guys inside it so you can just poop them out and get rid of them, right? Now, it has to be permeable to good guys, which is, is your food being broken down, et cetera. So that is why 70% of the human's immune system is housed in our gut, because it's, it's that guard at the gate that says, ah, you know, digested broccoli, you may pass. Um, bad guy, you're not going to pass. And it's, and it's an opening and closing of doors, if you will, allowing this, uh, it's an intelligence, you know, it really is an intelligence to say, you're good, you, you know, you can pass into my bloodstream and nourish me, you're bad, I'm going to poop you out, you know, to make it <laughs> nice and easy. So, within your esophagus, you can have a leaky esophagus. So these gram-negative bacteria create enough inflammation and bring enough inflammatory chemicals. You, you now have a leaky esophagus. And then for you as the patient, you're feeling heartburn. You're feeling that pain, even with very minimal amounts of acid. So uh, not enough to, to damage the, the mucous membrane of your esophagus or your stomach, but certainly enough to give you legitimate symptoms. So what's, you know, as I said, not everybody's going to get an endoscopy first, you know, first out of the, out of the um, shoot when they have uh, acid reflux symptoms and heartburn. What are they, what are they going to get? You go to your doctor, it's burning, I'm miserable. What are they going to hand you? An antacid, a, a proton pump inhibitor. Well, guess what? One of the main causes of this overgrowth of these particular bacteria is not having enough stomach acid. So now you just put you on a, a, a medication to lower it even further, and it's just gonna perpetuate the problem. So that's scary. We wanna, that's what we wanna know about this. We always wanna take more conservative measures first to, to treat and not jump on a medication, especially with one with so many side effects like the PPIs. Okay, the other issue is that in your mouth, of course we swallow saliva, and uh, if you have uh, periodontal disease, you can have these, these particular bad bacteria uh, in your mouth, and then they go, go down your esophagus when you swallow your saliva. So you wanna go to your dentist if you haven't been for a while and, and get periodontal disease treated if you have it, but also if you're a mouth breather. So uh, we've learned that uh, at night, if your mouth is open, bad bacteria are going to propagate. And then these bat you swallow, the bad bacteria gets into the esophagus, and if it's bad enough, they're going to multiply there. And so that's a problem that if you, of course, if you can't breathe through your nose, that's a different issue, and, and you need to look into, you know, ho hopefully if it's congestion, et cetera, get to the root cause of that. Uh, but sometimes it's a habit, and you can breathe through your nose perfectly fine. You can try mouth tape. That's, it sounds scary, and, and I, <laughs> I actually do it every night, uh, but it, it's not. It's, it, you can still breathe through your mouth if you needed to. It's not like you're sealed, sealed shut, but 
it gets your body in the habit of breathing through your nose, which your nose cleanses, etc. cetera. Uh, it, you know, it warms, it cleanses, it humidifies. Uh, so it's a better system to in through, in through the nose when you're inhaling and then, uh, you know, exhaling out through the mouth when, when you're awake. But at night, you want to you wanna really push toward the nasal breathing. Okay, so that's, um, so that's the mouth issue. And then diet, always our diet. So a high, sat this is what the research found, a high saturated fat diet, uh, low in fiber, and most of us are deficient in fiber in this country, is about 90 some odd percent, don't get enough fiber in our diet. Uh, this fosters growth, again, of these bad uh, gram negative bacteria. Also, you want to look at motility. So I talk a lot about how the, the motion of the GI tract is very, very important. Now it's, it's top down. We don't want reflux. We don't want it going back up the other way, but there's a motion in your, starts in your esophagus and then all the way through your colon. It's called peristalsis. And it's this wave-like motion of how your body pushes food down through your gut. Now, if you have a hiatal hernia, then that motion tends to be too, too static. It's too slow. Also, the vagus nerve tends to get irritated with either any sort of reflux, acid reflux, uh, with a hiatal hernia. And when the vagus nerve is irritated, then motion is compromised as well. So the problem with, you know, there's a, there's a correct speed. Let's look at your stomach. When you eat, food should be in there two to four hours. If it's in there a lot longer, you'll notice it. You'll just feel like, ugh, it's not moving. You know, that meal is just stuck there. I hear that from patients all the time. It feels like a swallowed a brick. It's just not moving. And that's because, you know, the normal motility is obviously compromised. But what that allows, when everything's slowed like that, it allows bad bacteria to multiply. So that's problematic. So we want to get to the root cause of either the hiatal hernia, the vagus nerve irritation, whether we have um, acid reflux with the stomach, if we have bile reflux, there's a number of different things to look at, but we need to restore that motion so things are not just sitting there and bad bacteria are, are propagating. Okay, so how do, we, how do we do this? Obviously with the low acid, some people need to take acid. As we get older, we tend to produce less stomach acid, not more. Uh, you want to do this with, with a doctor's blessing and guidance to trial hydrochloric acid, but you may very well need more. Uh, microbiome testing will show you if you're low in hydrochloric acid. And then there are certain supplements. There's green tea catechins, they're called, uh, curcumin, resveratrol, oregano oil. These are things that will help kill these bad um, gram negative bacteria. Now remember, we're not trying to annihilate them. We're just trying to normalize the population, right? Get it back in balance. And then as far as also with the diet, uh, polyphenols. Polyphenols are wonderful. Uh, they're found in a lot of different foods. So uh, dark berries and, and Brussels sprouts and broccoli, almonds and walnuts and flax and chia and what am I forgetting? Apples. Uh, but you can look it up online. You can see all the foods that are rich in polyphenols and just, you know, start integrating those into your diet. And um, the only other thing, well, we want to increase your fiber in your diet, decrease the saturated fat. I had mentioned that a moment ago. And then don't eat late. You know, give, give yourself uh, during the day a good four hours in between meals so that your body's natural cleansing mechanism, it's called the migrating motor complex. It can do its cleansing and that gets rid of bad bacteria. And then at night, you know, an overnight fast of 12 to 14 hours is really helpful as well. So a lot can be done for this, but I don't want you to fall into this trap of treating your very real heartburn symptoms with something that's making it worse, like an acid reducing medication. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did like subscribe to the channel, send me a comment. I love your comments. I always answer them and we'll talk soon.